What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be taking a look at Cinema Machine, which is a really really nice feature in Unity 2017. So uh, let's actually jump right into it. So we are back right here with our little animation we did in the last episode. A simple animation we did with Timeline. Let's pull it up real quick so we can have a look. So where's Timeline? Here it is. Um, that was made in the last video, so we used Timeline to make this sort of little cinematic, which is not really good, but you know, we have something playing in Timeline. Now we're going to be using this animation and we're going to be creating camera all around the scene that is going to take a look at our third person character control over here. So, so we're using the Cine Machine to do that. So the first step you'll need to do is download Unity 2017. If you don't have it already, um, it's currently in beta, so if you want to, you can go over to Unity Beta 2017. Here's a, little, a small typo, but basically it's over on this link. And now once you have that, you are going to need the asset as well. So go under Window, Asset Store, and you look for Cine Machine, which is a free asset. Uh, eventually it's going to be part of the Unity version, but right now it is not, um, simply because they're not done integrating it fully. Just note that 2017 is still in beta, as of making this video of course. Once you have it, you're going to have a folder right here called Cine Machine, and at this point you can start laying down your cameras. So the first thing we'll do is to create a static camera. Actually in the first, like this episode, we're going to be creating multiple static camera and just swap in between them. Just have a good feel of how this new module works. So once you have this in your project, you're going to see up here that you now have a new tab called Cine Machine. Now let's head over to say Cine Machine and start with the most basic one, the create virtual camera. You're going to notice that you have a new object in your scene called CMVCam1 and that is basically your virtual camera. But before you do that, um, in case you're like me, like in that case, I did not have a main camera beforehand, so I'm just going to delete this and create a normal camera. And now if I add a virtual camera, it's going to actually put a small icon next to it and also add a, um, a component. Of course, you could be adding this component by hand as well. So we have a camera. It's looking over here and we also have the CM cam. Now, most of the magic is going to be done on CM cam. Actually, the camera right here, we don't even have to touch it really, except the, um, the Cine Machine brain. So let's go back and actually start setting up those camera. Let's say um, we want to have a camera right where I am at the moment to keep looking at our player while he jumps. So I'm going to be choosing my VM camera, hit Control shift f and it's going to move it over here. So it's basically taking the position I had um, with my... Well, basically the position I had in the scene. And at this point, you're going to notice in your game view, so you have to pull your game view to see this, you have these um, squares just like breaking down the whole screen apart. And we're going to get into that in a short moment, but the first thing we'll need before anything else is on our virtual camera, we need something to look at. So there is a look at field right here, it's public. And I am going to be putting, you could be putting the third person character controller in here. You're going to see that what it's looking at is um, actually highlighted with this yellow square. Right now we're looking at the third person character controller and this one has it is a pivot point at the foot. So that's not really convenient. I'm going to take the head and put it here instead. So now we're looking at the head of this guy. Now let's quickly go through these on the right hand side really quickly. We have priority, we have look at, follow. The first one, priority, is actually going to let you know which camera should be active right now. To give you an example real quick, I will duplicate this camera and say move it over to this side. And you're going to notice that in our game view, we have the second camera right here. So let's call it CM cam 2. Now the only reason that this one is being rendered on top of the other one is because this one has, well basically they have the same priority right now, but it's assuming that the later one is the, the most prioritized camera. If you want to swap this around, you can say that um, the second camera has a lower priority, so let's say 9. In that case, VCAM1 has a priority of 10, it's higher, therefore it's going to be rendered first. Actually not first, but it's going to be you no know, rendered uh, on top of the other one. So let's go ahead and put a priority of 1 on this 
and a priority of two on the other camera. Both of these cameras right now have the same look at, so they're both looking at Ethan's head, which is the head of our third person character controller. If we press play, you're going to notice that it's actually following the character around, just like this. Now let's go with the other camera. To do this, I'll click on V camera one and click solo. This way it's going to mute all the other one and actually only look at the character using this camera. So if we play this, oh. Let's try that again, but we click faster. We get this very nice look at camera. As you can tell, the camera did not move. The camera is always at the same exact place. I'm going to turn off the second one so we can go back on a single camera setup. This one over here on the left hand side, it's going to rotate because we're looking at an object, but it's not going to move basically. Now this is where the follow script comes in. If you had a moving object in the scene, you could put it in here and your camera would follow it um, just perfectly. So if we were to just put say, let's just put the character in here for the sake of it, you're going to see that it follows the character around just like this, we also have a nice offset on it based on some other settings that we'll see in a moment. But follow is to actually move the container of the camera and look at is to move the orientation of it. I'll go ahead and uh, right now since I don't need to move my camera, I'll put that on none and I'll move, I'll move my camera back to where it was. Okay, so uh, before we go into lens, aim, body and noise, let's actually have a look at what we see right here on the scene. We see multiple squares, some of them are blue, some of them are red, and those are all there to adjust your shot. So basically what you can do with this is um, the section in the middle, the safe section in the middle, the one that doesn't have any overlay on top of it, means that the yellow dot can actually go all around this place without moving the actual cam. So assuming that we just make it a little bit larger, actually a lot larger, you're going to see that our camera doesn't move until the, the yellow dot touches the blue zone. So that's very useful if you don't want, uh, if you just want to be adding some kind of damping. So let's say, let's give an example right here. Um, if we just put that really, really close, you're going to see that the camera starts moving right away. And let's say that's the kind of effect we want, but we don't want the camera to go up and down. We could actually pull these a lot higher so you would see only a, um, a move on the X axis like that until we reach a point where it's too low. So that is pretty cool to adjust your shot and you can also adjust it more by clicking in the middle and then moving it around. So this is super useful, super nice. If you want to be putting your shot like all on the right hand side, you just move like this and then you can hit play. You're going to be seeing a lot of this section on the left now. So you can really adjust your shot um, super simply in the game view like this and this is actually being saved and uh, you can see it in the game. So fairly nice editing, super easy to do and it's really fast to test. Alright so we saw the look at, look at is what we're looking at, we saw the follow, that's the body of the camera, that's where the camera is being positioned. Now if you go down here to aim and body, it's basically the same exact thing but you have some nice settings you can play around with. So let's go under aim and you can actually hit the show guys, as you can tell. All the modification we do over here um, are actually being reflected here. So you have like the data you can use. As you can tell, we're just gonna be playing around with those lines a little bit. It's the dead zone height, and this is the dead zone width. I'm having trouble actually reaching it. Let me try to zoom in. There we go. Now, um, you can also add some kind of smoothing to this, so the damping. If you want it to be super robotic, super fast, you can leave it on zero. It's going to give that kind of effect. So it's like extremely sharp. However, if you want to add some smoothing to it, you can actually say bump up the horizontal damping to maybe something like 10. And you're going to see that it's super smooth. Actually, it's so smooth that we're not fast enough. <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit less. So let's go for three. I lied, something like 1.5 could be better. Anyway, that's not the whole point. Uh, we can also adjust our shot so it shows a little bit more of the left side like this. 
and just like this we can actually make we can actually adjust our shot super fast same thing is with the body but right now we won't be messing around with the body too much since we're not uh, we're not actually moving the container of the camera we're just staying in the same place all the time so what I'll be doing at this point is uh, we're going to go back to a two camera setup and actually swap in between these so we can see how the blending work now the blending work has to be done uh, via code so obviously your logic your code logic is gonna say something like you have your first person camera and then you click a button and then you move on to a third person so you need some kind of logic to actually swap these around let me quickly create a script that you can use it's gonna be fairly simple let's call it swap cam and we're going to be making something extremely fast. So I've got Visual Studio booted up. So let's quickly create something like a private void update and add some keys in here. So if input get key down, if we press on say, um, should I do alpha? We'll do alpha one. So key code alpha one for the first camera. And then let's do another one for alpha two. So I just duplicate this real quick. Let me put brackets on that. Okay, so alpha 1 is going to be camera 1 and alpha 2 is going to be camera 2. Let's declare those camera as public. So we can create some game object. We can be playing around with the priority of those, but I'm simply going to be using um, game object in that case. So let's say cam 1 and also cam 2. Now if we press on 1, we say cam 1 dot set active um, through and cam 2 set active false. Let's take these and actually revert it over here. Obviously not the most efficient code, it's not really scalable, but you get the whole point. You're gonna have your logic that drives this. Um, there's multiple ways. Right now what I've did is I turn off one of the camera and the other one is turned on, like this. But obviously it could be something else such as modifying the priority of the camera. So you could say, well this one has a better priority now, so automatically swap. Let's actually put that down on anything. I'll put that on my camera, why not? And then we're going to drag and drop the first one and the second one. If we press play now and try to actually, you know, try it out. I went from one camera to the other one just like this. So one and then two. You're going to realize that we have this blending that is quite slow. Maybe we don't like that. Maybe you want to adjust it. Everything is actually adjustable and that is very very nice so we're going to move on to the brain so we played around with the um, the virtual camera a bit now we're going to go on the camera itself and play with the brain so it's the machine brain this one first option can show debug text always useful to know which camera you're on right now and uh, then we have the show camera frustrum always you know very useful in your scene then we have the world up override, which is a little bit funky to explain, so I'll just show you actually. Um, you can create a empty gum object, have a slight rotation on it, so let me go back here. I'm just going to put a slight rotation on this thing, and it looks something like that now. Now if I go ahead and I put that on my brain, all the camera are going to assume that small angle I just put. And this is to actually override the up axis for every single camera. This is very useful in, um, and they said in the documentation as well, it's really useful in case of top-down games, so like isometric game. You need that angle um, just to like look at your field because you never really want to have like a flat angle from the top or a flat angle from the bottom. Um, so this is going to give it like a new up axis, which is going to be useful. In our case, right here, not going to be so much um, of use, so we're going to get rid of it and move on to the next parameter. The next one is the update method, so you want to be putting that on a fix, late, or smart. I'm not, like, I'll be completely honest, I know what smart is, I know what fix is. Fix is, basically, it's updating at the same time as physics, so this is updated um, really, really often. Late update is updated after your camera, like, after your player moves. Um, if, you, if your player moves on a normal update loop, then it's going to be done afterward. Smart update, I guess, some kind of in-between, I am really not sure. So the interesting part right here is the blend mode. We have the default blend, which is the one you saw like a second ago. If we just go in the game, I'll show you as we do it. Camera one, camera two. You can also see in the debug text of uh, the transition where it's at right now. So we just reach 100% and it's on the other cam. 
Now this is um, every every single camera you're going to be putting in your scene if you do switch like I'm doing right now, they're all going to be using the default blend which is ease in and ease out. What if we put cut? As you can tell now we get a clean cut in between these camera. Now there's ease in, ease out, ease in, ease out, hard in, hard out and linear. So there's like a bunch of options you can use but what if what if you actually want to have a nice ease from left to right, but if you want to go from right to left, you just want it to cut super fast. You can also do that by defining every single um, transition you can have. So you can head over to the blends right here and then create a new asset. Let's create that um, blending, default blending or you know, anything blending really. And then you have a nice property from, to, style and then time. You pretty much already know what to do at that point. But let's actually do it. So from, say, uh, which one is the left one and which one is the right one? This is the left one, it's VCAM 1. So say from VCAM 1 to VCAM 2, you want to be doing a ease in like this. Actually, this is ease in, ease out. Okay, well, that works too. But now we said that if we want to go from 2 to 1, we just want to have a cut like we're having right now. But the whole point of this um, right now it's using the default blend, so by default it's going to be cutting over there. Let's put that on, say, linear, right? So from left to right, it's an ease in, ease out. From, from right to left, it's a linear. You can also add another one, say, from 2 to 1. You want this to be a cut. And this way, you have the behavior you want. So this could be extremely useful. I see it a lot in menu screen, you see it a lot in games that um, you want to slowly focus on an object and maybe spawn a menu and then when you go back into the gameplay you want it to go fast so maybe like it maybe it's going to be the exact same ease in is out but you're going to be doing extremely faster like this so two seconds go over here and then let's go back into the gameplay. Bunch of effects I see this asset as something really really useful that I am going to be using a hundred percent for sure when I make some um, PC games. Not quite sure it's going to be so much useful in mobile games because of the whole overhead behind that system. I'm not sure if it's going to be efficient, if it's going to make my, my game lag or not, but definitely I will be using this a lot in PC games. And there's going to be a lot more tutorial coming on this. Uh, we have to reproduce a lot of cameras, but right now this was a brief overview. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And if you did, leave a like on the video. Always appreciate that. You can also check out the Facebook, the Discord. We're really active nowadays. so. Just uh, check out the links in the description. Thank you so much guys for watching and I will catch you quite soon. Bye bye.